Hey, welcome to another episode of Chaz Beer Reviews. Continuing with the BJCP style guidelines, we are now in style 24C, Beer de Guard. I don't know how that's how you pronounce it, but that's how I'm pronouncing it. Overall impression, a fairly strong, malt-accentuated, lagered, artisanal beer with a range of malt flavors appropriate for the color. All are malty yet dry with clean flavors and a smooth character. And for that, I've got, which is one of the most, I, I think is like one of the most famous examples of the styles. This is a French beer. Brasserie La Choulette, La Sans Culottes, which means the trouserless in French. And like that's a, a famous um, uh, painting, uh, Liberty leading the people to, on the barricade or something like that. This beer was actually, this beer was actually banned in a few states because of, of this label. Come on. All right, so the beer de garde is like one of the most niche styles and like rarest styles. Um, not quite as rare as like actual bottled lambic, but pretty close. You don't tend to see a lot of American breweries doing this. All right, so let's check out the comments, history, all that stuff. So it's actually quite long, but actually really interesting. So um, three main variations are included style, brown, blonde, and amber. Um, and it's, I don't know why they didn't just make the sub styles like the pale color beer and amber color beer. You know, you could you could have done three different ones. But it's, um, and he also mentioned a related style is Beer to Mars, which is brewed in March, Mars, for present use and will not age as well. Um, a very dry beer, attenuation rates 80 to 85%. That's really, you know, quite dry. Um, age and oxidation imports often increases fruitiness, caramel flavors, and adds corked and musty notes. These are all signs of mishandling at not characteristic elements of the style. Uh, name literally means beer which has been kept or lagered. Yeah, a lot of websites say something like that. Beer for keeping. Something, you know, basically that it's it's meant to be aged or that it's okay to age it um character ingredients and, and this is i don't really put this on our characters ingredients but it says the seller character commonly described in literature really literature like that kind of literature um, um is more of a feature of mishandled commercial pro exports than fresh authentic products the somewhat moldy character comes from the corks and or oxidation in commercial versions and is incorrectly identified as musty or seller like again that's a uh, pretty redundant and also i was just on the uh, Beer Advocate and Rape Beer, and they actually, both sites, both like they, when you read the description of Beer de Guard, they say, oh, it can be moldy and kind of cellar like. And BJCP is saying, like, that's really not correct. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like, how are you going to find an old bottle that doesn't have that character? I mean, I guess we'll find out. Uh, style comparison, this is, you know, it says related to Belgian Saison style, which we haven't got to yet. Main difference is that Beer de Guard is rounder. I don't know if that means rounder. Richer malt focus and lacks the spicy bitter character with saison. So how's it like? There's like four or five differences there. So I don't know how it's you know close. I mean, well it does say related, not similar, but all right, whatever. Um, and they actually say for the entry instructions, if you're entering, if you're earning a homebrew in a homebrew competition, you gotta say if it's blonde, amber, or brown. With our vitals, 18 to 20 IBUs, so not very bitter. Six to 19 SRM again, because it could be anywhere from blonde to brown. So all right, so let's dive into this beer, beginning with the aroma. Well, I mean, obviously green bottle, so I am definitely getting uh, skunkiness on here. It's not too bad. I mean, it's just, maybe it's just me, like I've built up a tolerance to skunk over the years, so. But I'm smelling way down, I'm getting, it is kind of like um, a Saison or Lambic, like a farmhouse kind of thing. So I am getting like kind of weediness, um, pale malt. Maybe a little bit of palm fruit, you know, like you're, like, so you're getting like kind of horse blanket thing. Um, green, you know, green apple, green pear, something like that. Wheat. I don't know if I'd go as far as say bready, but it smells, it smells quite dry as far as like hops or anything. I mean, there's a slight kind of spiciness to it, but that could just be like the age of the bottle. And also I think there might be Brett in here. If you look closely on this uh, bottle, you can see a ring around the neck. That's usually an indication of wild yeast or bacteria or both. Thankfully, it didn't. It wasn't a gusher, but um, yeah. All right, so it smells pretty good. Uh, if that skunk was in there, I think it would smell great. But I don't want to see how it set, compares to the styles. All right, so aroma, prominent malty sweetness, often with a complex, light to moderate intense intensity, toasty, bready, rich malt character. It's kind of a poorly worded sentence. Um, I would not say prom prominent prominent malty sweetness. No, this one is quite dry. Like again, like I say, it's on low to moderate esters. Okay, yeah, maybe. Little to no hop aroma, maybe a bit spicy, peppery, or herbal. Uh, yeah, I am getting kind of spicy, peppery, herbal in there, but it could be wild yeast or something. 
Paler versions will still be malty, but will lack richer, deeper aromatics and may have a bit more hops. Okay, all right, well then that makes sense. Generally quite clean, although stronger versions may have a light spicy alcohol note as it warms. This is 7% ABV and I'm not I'm not smelling alcohol at all. Um, so yeah, this one's kind of gonna be tough to rate just because I don't really have much of a frame of reference. And again, there's like all these, it's a niche style and then it has sub styles within it. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be tough. Um, I'm gonna say, I can kind of go eight or nine on this one. I'm gonna say, mm -hmm. I want to penalize it because it's not super malty, but they said it is, the blonde ones don't have to be. So, plus you got a little skunk on there. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say eight for now. Maybe we'll come back. Appearance, well, sure, not sure how this is looking on camera, but yeah, this is. I don't know if they use champagne yeast in there, but it's you know I can look in the glass and it's like lots of uh, spastic uh, carbonation there. Uh, head is what two fingers there. I had to keep topping it off when I was taking the picture because it kept fading, but it's sticking around. Um, and there is like big yeast chunks, um, swirling around in the glass there. I don't know if that's picking up on camera, but, um, let's see what it looks like on the specs. Appearance, three main ver variations exist. Yeah, we know. So color can range from golden blonde to reddish brown, or sorry, reddish bronze to chestnut brown. Okay, what was my SRM on here? Probably about four or five. Yeah. It's hard to see because it's a rainy day out, but yeah, I'm going to say four to five, maybe seven. <laughs> Um, clarity is brilliant to fair, although haze is not unexpected in this type of unfiltered beer. Well-formed head, generally white to off-white, varies by beer color, average persistence. Okay, well, um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a little hazy, but you got yeast chunks in there, and they said it doesn't have to be crystal clear, and, you know, everything's normal. All right, so I'm going to go the full three out of three on appearance. I wonder how it tastes. I guess we'll find out. Cheers. I don't know they say cheers in French. It's cool. Wow. <laughs> J judging by the nose, it doesn't taste anything like what I was expecting. I was smelling something like Saison or Lambic without the bacteria component, but then I taste it and it is quite malty. Actually, it's very malty. So it actually, the, the beer de garde is kind of similar to like the Belgian so-called pale ale, which really should be called Belgian amber ale. So I am getting that kind of... Um, yeah, I would say rich malt, slightly bready, a little sweet. Actually, and then maybe like just sweet. Like I wouldn't say it's super sweet. I wouldn't say it's just a little sweet. It's it's sweet. Um, yeah, so really interesting beer. Let's keep going. It does have, what I was saying with the nose, it does have a little bit of like a I don't know if I want to say wild exactly, but it does have like a farmhouse kind of quality to it. So I am getting kind of your hay, your horse blanket, that countryside terroir kind of character. Um, but not to the extent of like a Lambic or a Saison. Like it's just a little bit there. And it's, if there's Brett in here, it's, um, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting, it's not sour at all. So... I don't know what that ring on. I mean, there's got to be just a tiny little bit of bread in here, which would probably account for the farmhouse quality. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, it, it's very, very dry. It's interesting because, like, it's it's malty up front. Like, you, as soon as you taste it, you're getting almost like, I don't want to say as far as Doppelbach, but maybe like, like Maybach level of bready, you know, rich maltiness and, like, sweetness. And then, it, it like, it just kind of changes on a dime to like this champagne, well, I mean, shame, like Saison kind of, of dryness. That's really interesting. Yeah, and it finishes like with a kind of a caramel flavor. Also like a little bit of like a, a lemon peel or lemon pith, something like that. Um, there's like a little subtle kind of spicy peppery kind of thing in there and um yeah so it's this i gotta say this is one of the most interesting beers i've ever tasted i don't think it's like the most delicious beer i've ever tasted but it's certainly the most um or one of the most interesting um again it's gonna be tough to score so let's say what they let's see what the bjcp says for flavor 
medium to high malt flavor, often with a toasty, rich, biscuity, toffee, light, or light caramel sweet character. I agree with that. I mean, they say medium, medium to high. I, yeah, I'd say it's somewhere. I say medium, medium slash high. Malt flavors and complexity tend to increase with beer color. All right, well, this one's a blonde, so it's. I, I would imagine a, a brown, you know, would be uh, real rich. Low to moderate esters and alcohol flavors. True. Um, I'm uh, if there's esters in here, I'm really not getting it, and there's certainly no alcohol in here. Medium low hop bitterness provides some support. The balance is always tilted toward the malt. I agree with that. There's definitely enough hops for uh, for balance, but it, I, I would I would describe this as a malty beer. Darker versions will have more of an initial malty sweet impression than paler versions, but all should be malty in the palate and finish. True. The malt flavor lasts into the finish, which is medium dry to dry, never cloying. I agree. Um, I probably could it put it closer to dry. Um, it's like a little bit of a malty, re, you know, residual flavor, but I would not. It's not. It's not a sweet aftertaste. It's sweet up front, but then once it goes down, it is is quite dry. Low to no hot flavor, spicy, peppery, herbal. True. I would say I'd say low on there. Maybe very low. Although pale versions can have slightly higher levels of herbal or spicy hot flavor, which can also come from the yeast. Yeah. So um, I think it's what that spicy, peppery kind of dry thing in there is like a little bit of hops, but it's probably like a 70, 30 yeast to hop ratio. Smooth, well lager character, even if made with ale yeast, aftertaste of malt character, appropriate for the color with some dryness and light alcohol. Well, this is interesting because they say finishes dry, but then they're saying aftertaste of malt. I don't know how you can finish dry and have that. I don't know. I don't know what they mean there. It's kind of confusing. Um, yeah, so tough to rate. I don't know how old this bottle is. I'm assuming it's quite old um, just because of my luck like that. But, um, yes, yeah, so, I mean, it, it seems to be on point. Uh, I'm going to go 17. I don't know if that's high or low. I think that's a little generous. But, I mean, it's one of the, you know, commercial examples of style. So, really, we should give it a 50 and call it a day. Uh, oh. Let's go with mouthfeel. I think you can tell where that's going. I'd probably put about a medium body, maybe maybe medium light, very high carbonation, obviously. Um, not that it's a challenge to drink. It's, you know, quite smooth. Um, you know, just slightly malty aftertaste. Um, and then it finishes kind of clean after a while. 7% ABV. Feels like a slightly lighter beer than that. Like I'm drinking this feels like a 5.5 or something, but um, there's no alcohol warmth. I'm not tasting alcohol at all. And, and again, 7% in 2018 is, is well, I mean, I wouldn't say it's sessionable, but it's certainly not a challenge, especially not for me. So let's see what they say about um, mouthfeel. Medium to medium light, lean body. Okay. Often with a smooth, creamy, silky character. I don't know if I'd say... No, not creamy, silky. I mean, I'd say it's definitely a smooth texture. Moderate to high carbonation, true. Moderate alcohol warming, but should be very smooth and never hot. Um, yeah, so I'm not I, I'm not really getting alcohol, and it's not a challenge to drink. I'm going to go four out of five. I don't think it's quite perfect on the mouthfeel. Overall, I think it's like an eight, maybe a nine. All right, so let's throw a score of 40 out of 50. I mean, I could give it a nine, but I have to bump up something else, and I really don't want to do that. I'm gonna, I'm penalizing a lot on the aroma because it's it's skunky and like those, even though it tastes malty, it, it's not smelling malty, which again leads me to believe that this is just an old bottle. If it's an old bottle, it's fine because it's still tasting, it still tastes good, and it's still very drinkable, just not quite living up to the spec. So I would love to try this fresh off the bottom line, maybe someday. All right, so I am going very very long. The total score of 40 out of 50 for Brasserie La Choulette. La Sans Culottes, the trouserless. So thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time. Cheers. Somebody brewed it. Chad just reviewed it. Thanks for watching Chad's beer review. Trust me, the next episode will be a lot better. 